Hello everyone, it is AD with Cosmastrology and I'm going to be doing your pick a card reading today and we are going to be looking at secret enemies. So this again was another suggestion from my lovely baby sister. She really is the one who keeps this channel going when it comes to the content ideas guys. So send her some, send her some love. <laughs> um, but it was also, but it was inspired by an experience that I was going through. Um, and it made me think about the secret enemies that I've had in my life. And that made me think, of course, about astrology, um, specifically dealing with the sixth house and the 12th house. Um, the sixth house being like open enemies and the 12th house dealing with secret enemies. And I, and I recognized a pattern um, within my life. Um, in relation to my 12th house. And so I just wanted to, so my sister, excuse me, my sister had the lovely idea to be like, hey, why don't we, you know, talk about this and share this. So that's what we're looking at. Um, I do kind of want to give a little bit of a spoiler alert <laughs> um, that I do feel like the ultimate secret enemy will always be you to an extent, right? So I was in a situation and I had a lovely friend tell me and she was just like, that person was blocking your blessings. And at first I was like, yes. And then I realized something. I was like, you know, it wasn't that person that was blocking my blessings. It was, that person was a manifestation of things that were, that were, blah. That person was a manifestation of things that were already within myself that was materialized into blocking my blessings. So it put the onus back on me. And again, we when we do work here with Cosmastrology, of course, we're always looking at what can we control. So I just wanted to give that little spiel as convoluted as it was because my tongue was not helping me <laughs> at all. Uh, but I do, I want to give that spiel to just give kind of a broader perspective of, of where I'm coming from and where this reading is coming from. It's not so much of like who is plotting, who is actively plotting against you. We're more so looking at the vessels of which that are acting against you. It could be a physical person. It could be a thought. Um, it just depends. And we're going to see what comes out in this card. So I'm really excited to do this reading, to be honest, because I do hope in conjunction with the 12th house of secret enemies, um, when we identify that secret enemy, that is when we find liberation and freedom and escape, which is represented by the 12th house. So I really hope that this um, reading offers an insight and offers, um, offers an insight and hopefully the gives you a place to start when it comes to truly liberating yourself from this matrix when it truly you recognize that enemies um can be acting out on behalf of you in order to get you to different places in your life not that they will um succeed so with that being said guys you know normally i don't do intros but i thought that this was important to get a context to this reading before we jump into it but i'm really really excited guys i will meet you over at your pile please take a moment to meditate see what Yu-Gi-Oh card speaks to you and i will see you over there um yeah let's let's get into it so we're gonna of course you know move everything out and slide this down here we're gonna start with the magnificent pile number one hello hello pile number one it is ad with cosmastrology and i'm going to be doing your pick a card reading guys thank you so much for joining me welcome back to the channel if you're old welcome to the channel if you are new we are so happy to have you here as we grow and expand, guys thank you you've been showing so much love i so appreciate you participating in the comment section it means the world to me um so thank you thank you thank you but let's go ahead and hop into your reading this reading today is going to be about your secret enemies please check out the intro because i really i had to talk about what am i talking about with the secret enemy um so please check out that intro if you are impatient like myself and just click to the <laughs> click to the reading which i do all the time please take a moment if you have it to get context for this reading anyways so let's hop into it you got, you chose the magic hole golem. So it's really interesting to see that there's like a magical hole that is like a secret enemy, which really gives me um, emphasis to the 12th house. So you might want to look into your 12th house placements or things that aspect the 12th house in your chart, uh, because it gives me this feeling of um, that hole and 12th house does deal with secret enemies. So it's very fitting, but that black hole where it feels like the enemy is a black hole where, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. So of course that's why we're going to look at the cards, but very interesting start to see how that is going to reflain, ref given like play out. I honestly feel like whatever this is, um, 
I'm kind of getting a, a, a little bit of an image is something that's a secret in, enemy to you is when you are giving into something and you're not receiving. It feels like sometimes you just give into like a bottomless pit is, is kind of what I'm hearing. So that's really interesting. Excuse me. <laughs> so let's look at your astrology cards. Please remember that I, I subscribe to Vedic um, astrology, which is different from Western. So my placements could be different than yours, but the energy should read about the same. So we're starting off here with Mercury mind. What is the black hole? Your mind. Secret enemy can be communication. Um, You could find yourself in situations of gossip um, where people are gossiping about you. People are talking behind your back, um, but also in a sense, you are very much um you're very much a curious person so sometimes your curiosity can lead you into like these black holes so very interesting start virgo gemini energy started uh represented here wow so funny we got gemini i think so there's a lot about talking communication you my power one people have to be so careful um, of what people are telling you and what you're telling to other people. That it seems to be an exchange where sometimes it could feel like you feel like your thoughts, your mind are going into this bottomless pit, this bottomless pit. Other times it's people that are speaking um, about you, around you, and not speaking to you. And so nothing ever moves forward. Um, I do see that there's people, you know, it's interesting that you got like this twin energy <laughs> here, um, this duality, where you have to be very mindful of what face people are showing to, to you. Now, this is a very interesting secret enemy because I right now with these two cards, the way that I feel, and of course, I always come from an objective perspective. I try not to um, inject my ego into my readings. It happens sometimes, but I try to be mindful of it. So just from a perspective, you know, I think that people want to show you their best selves. I think that people keep things from you. People show a two-faced facedness towards you because there's something about you that they want to impress you and so I feel like you can find out that like you were friends with a phantom or you were friends with somebody who um or, or not even friends you've just been acquainted with people who are only very one-dimensional they don't want to show you the other side of themselves because I think that they're actually afraid of the rejection and kind of being thrown into this fiery pit so people do speak to impress you um which is quite interesting so let's look at the Saturn return age wow you got mercury wow I'm just gonna keep it I'm just gonna finish it I mean <laughs> Some of you guys might have a mercurial placement in your sixth house, Gemini Virgo in the sixth house, or you just have a stellium in the sixth house. So there seems to be, it's, it's funny because the, um, the sixth house does is the house of enemies. So it's funny that you have this here. So really pay close attention to your sixth house and rulership of your sixth house. Um, but it really looks like it's just words and mind. Like it's, that's very interesting. I also want to say that you might want to look to see where you have Scorpio in your chart. Um, this is such a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even at a loss of, of words because this is all about words and communication and misunderstandings and people not understanding where you're coming from, things being misinterpreted. Um, and I, I'm, I'm really interested and curious to get into the actual tarot because this just feels like your secret enemies. A lot of it is mental. A lot of it is actually in your mind. Um, and sometimes your thoughts or not sometimes this is just a universal spiritual law. Your thoughts are reflected in your reality. So when you start feeling a certain type of way about yourself, you almost instantly have somebody who's reflecting that right back at you. It's almost as if, um, your enemies present themselves as manifestations. Oh, this is so powerful. Okay. Woof. Oh my God. Your enemies present themselves as manifestations of those, that, negative side of your thinking but it, it actually turned into another person so I feel like you're always confronted with a twin you're always confronted with a karmic um you're always confronted with people who are trying to um argue with you or or talk your ideas down um or, or it might not be all the time, but when somebody is doing that, they're acting honestly as an agent for you to prove yourself right. So it just seems like debate, critical thinking, expression is something that is very much a part of who you are. Your curiosity is core, 
But a lot of people try to challenge you. A lot of people try to prove you wrong. A lot of people want to kind of knock your intellect in a way or knock your communication style. Um, so I, I really feel like you're, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's the best way to kind of sum it up. And so when you feel it's, so I guess an example to use to kind of use it in real life is like if you were to be working on a project or what have you and you're like been working your ass off on this project but you're really nervous about the font or what have you um so then somebody comes in and they look at your project for a second and they're like that font is terrible. How, who picked this font? Was it you? Did you pick this font? And then you shudder, you know? And so I feel like when you, when you think negative thoughts, there's almost always somebody who comes in and affirms that negative thought. But your trick is to, you know, not that you can't take critique or take criticism, but I think that you have to balance out your critique and criticism and not take everything as a personal affront when people critique you or prove you wrong. I think that or um, or take it as you are wrong because they just said that you were, you know, there's, there's a balance here. And I'm imagining that you can have a lot of Virgo or Gemini energy, Virgo, Gemini energy. So you're extremely critical of your thoughts. You're extremely conscientious, conscientious of how you come off and your appearances and how you present yourself. And I do think that there's a duality to you. There is another side to you. You are extremely fluid. Obviously you have a lot of Gemini energy. So you attract people who are the exact same way. <laughs> You attract people who are also very conscientious about how, how they're um, presenting themselves. And so it can end up into these like really pesky little battles um, of just people. But it's interesting to see the theme of twins pop up. So yeah, Virgo. Wow, that's so funny. Virgo, um, Uranus, and Taurus. So I don't want you to look at these signs and be like, these are the people who are my enemies. <laughs> Um, these are just some of the traits that can, that they can inhabit. And again, it's always going to be a reflection of you. So people who get too caught up and are too caught up in appearances and are insecure in those appearances, those are your enemies. You, my pal one people cannot hang out with people who are mentally unstable because you are mentally, uh, you flutter a lot and you're, it's not that you're easily, uh, hmm. Mercury is the most, It's it doesn't have a sense of loyalty, if that makes sense, because it truly acts as the messenger. It's, it's impartial. I even want to say that Mercury is a genderless planet. I mean, it hasn't even committed to a gender. It's not feminine or masculine. It just is. And so this is a complicated way of just being like, you just are. Your enemies just are. <laughs> Um, and so the people who dislike you, there's something, honestly, I would say very superficial about what it is that they don't like or what they're critiquing. That's kind of what I get with this Virgo energy. And even if you know Virgos or you have Virgo energy, Virgos are perfectionists. So they notice the most minute of details. And so sometimes they can criticize the font, the font and be like, this is not the right font, but yet miss the entire writing you know, of and miss the story and focus in on the font being bad and fail to realize that the story is spectacular. Um, and so sometimes, you know, whatever is brought as kind of a creek to you, you really have to do your due diligence to decide if you're going to take that critique or not because you have a lot of freedom. And I just imagine that you're going to be filled with, there's a lot of critique, particularly on beauty standards or how you look or things like outside of you that you just cannot listen to. Um, so it feels like, in a sense, your the secret enemy that you have is also an enemy of materialism um, and originality. Because you're an original, people who want to keep the status quo will find the most minute things to criticize you on. Be like, you forgot a period, so you're stupid. And you're like, um, what? You know, so I just feel like you can follow in those. So if somebody, if you do notice that there's people in your life who critique you on the littlest of infractions, that is not a friend. That is somebody that spirit sent to 
be like a little mice like festering um to slowly kind of gnaw away at your intellectual pride i honestly it's funny that all of this is in your mind right all of this is a mental i, I feel like you're actually pretty comfortable in yourself in your skin in your body for the most part you know I, we all want to be perfect in some way i'm sure but for the most part you seem pretty comfortable and confident in yourself so it's just these, like little little things that just pop into your life that can bring problems um so let's keep going. Oh, interesting enemies. We have the emperor, the three of pentacles, and the ten of swords. <laughs> oh man, I was going to I was gonna wait for this, but I think that it's perfect. So we got the card goblins. What did I say? Like you have little goblin people who are <laughs> I, I don't know what to like that's so interesting you know I never know how these readings are going to unfold and so I always thank you pal one because you're always like my experiment group to kind of see what shape this can take so I fumble through it a lot so I thank you so much for your patience um but it just feels like yeah there's goblins around you there's people who just nitpick it seems like interestingly enough they can be a part of the masculine persuasion maybe you you know um or they can people that hold a lot of power and it's interesting with all the Virgo too and I meant to say this Virgos are the servants of the universe like they are very much in the service industry health industry um they genuinely like helping people from a genuinely pure place um and, you know, that's why they are represented by the virgin because there's something again very pure about um the help of a Virgo it, there, it's like a they're like pixies, in my opinion. They, they're fairy, very fairy-like. They come in, they're very small, and they can see things that nobody else sees and kind of shed light on a situation. In this case, the opposite you know, of that are these goblins that come in, people who are tempted by material success, material comforts. And because we're in the world where materialism is king, again, even with the emperor, the emperor is about, um, you know, power, not the not necessarily in the in the devil scent but like things like the emperor he's not broke far from it has no intention of being broke <laughs> you know and that could be something that is a part of you but when you start hanging out with a certain society and i also want to say that too i feel like your enemies are of an upper echelon i don't know why i'm saying that because there's a level of shallowness to them um but you know he's not broke and so i do imagine that there is something here about collaboration and because you operate a little bit differently and again Uranus you have your own thoughts you're naturally a rebel against this you can find getting critique from men of power men of stature but even then with the ten of swords it really doesn't go anywhere like you know I really do feel like I want to tell you you're meant to explore this forest you're meant to go through you know number five changes number five again you're always meant to kind of just be be in the rhythm of the universe explore again mercury you're indifferent you don't have you don't need to have any loyalties <laughs> and so when people try to take control of over you um i'm getting an image of a leo or the sun when, when people are very dominant that is an enemy to you also so you kind of have now that i'm thinking about it or you know spirit guides were here consulting together <laughs> um you kind of have two enemies right you have the enemy of the mind um and people who are very critical and then you have the enemy of people that are trying to gain power over you and and, and say what you can and can't do and definition and rule and boss you and that's not going to fly either so you're very much a free exploratory pe um person i think even when it comes to taurus it's like stability is also a secret enemy of yours you're not meant to be um I don't want to say secure because we all want a level of security, but security isn't your main priority in this lifetime. So when you have people who preach prior, who preach that, that is actually an enemy to your mindset and to your experience. So I really hope that this is making sense because there's so many different layers here, Pal One. Please let me know. Um, but yeah, with the Ten of Swords to the Three of Swords, I really honestly like this combination because I feel like you always break out of it. I honestly feel like your enemies, you overcome them. I feel like you overcome goblins. I think that you shed enemies very 
very quickly. You have very quick discernment. You know who you're going to talk to and who you're going to explore with and who you're not. Um, it does not take you long because you're so mercurial ruled. You're always on next to the next. So enemies, I honestly have a very hard time keeping up with you. The the real times when you will struggle will probably be, and, and this is so interesting, it'll probably be with a divine masculine, a partner, a husband, a father, a um, or a father figure, father to your kids. It feels like your issues can sometimes deal with like the patriarchy. Um, and if you're a masculine watching this and you're not a feminine, I'm, I, you know, I have more feminine followers, so I, I, I think in that terms, I'm trying to expand. But um, if you're a masculine in that sense, same thing. Like, you know, like you got, you have um, agents of order, right? We have agents of chaos. You have agents of order who tell you what you can't do, like restrictions, you know, Saturn, when restrictions are put on you, that is when you are in enemy, enemy territory. You should not be restricted as a masculine or a feminine. You can't do it. You always need to break out. So that's pretty fascinating. And I do think that you are actually quite independent. And if you are um, working on a group project or something, then it does show that you should definitely be the leader and take charge. Um, don't let too many, I, I, this sounds, this, mm, how do I, mm, I don't be like when you're working in group projects, again, don't let people's focus on little details and little things block you from the bigger picture because there's plenty of distractions that come down this path, you know, with goblins, you actually do have people who are goblins, uh, but you really don't interact with them very long. This is a very swift energy. It's like in and out. So I, I really don't even think that you truly have enemies to fear like that, you know, and certainly in this reading, I don't even even think that anybody's like actively working against you right now uh pile one um besides the patriarchy no i'm just kidding i'm totally kidding uh but i don't think that there's anything really pressuring you right now other than like a, again just ordinary pressures of capitalism and philosophical thoughts and all that and that's a whole nother conversation for another day but like i said you're meant to not go down those rabbit holes and actually explore your own curiosities hence why you have this black hole your enemies just kind of get swallowed up they they you they you encounter goblins but you recognize them very quickly and you keep it pushing um so yeah i would if i had to sum all of this up your enemy, my pal number one, would definitely be your negative thoughts about yourself that spirit sends manifestations of for people to critique and debate and power. People who exercise and try to exert a lot of power over you. Those are your secret enemies. You can't. Nah, nah, not for you. Um, so let's go ahead and move into your animal spirit and your animal guide. You got such a powerful one to see how you can, um, you know, overcome these enemies and overcome these obstacles. And you got dragon, supernatural. So I mean, blow fire on it. <laughs> but you are the ancient wise, wise sage. You can shape shift at will. Mastery is your destiny. Rise with dignity. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love it. Supernatural and shape shifter with all that Gemini energy. Um, like I, you're very cunning when it comes to your enemies. I, you're very hard to catch. Uh, like I said, I, I recently finished Harry Potter. So you are actually like, you're the, what is that that he has to call it? The snitch, the snake, the little thing with the wings that he has to fly around and catch when he's playing Quidditch. You are that. <laughs> you're that thing, right? And it, and the entire point of that game was that you, that thing is very hard to catch and you can't catch it. <laughs> Um, and so that's kind of how you operate through life. And again, you're, it's a little fairy pixie, like definitely like Tinkerbell kind of vibes in a sense where it's just like, you're really meant to flutter and go all in different directions. And people are going to try to chase, 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 chase. And you're like the, or the little, what is it? The little gingerbread man. Like you can't catch me. Can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Like that is... <laughs> Your enemies can't even catch up to you. So that's so funny, Paul One. So again, sorry about the rambling. I know it took a while to get that message out, but I hope that this resonated. This is super cool. Um, thanks for letting me, you know, speak to you. So definitely there is a dragon emoji. Hit that dragon emoji in the comment section for me, please, because you are shapeshifter and your words, again, communication communication is like fire, right? So when you speak, you breathe fire, you breathe knowledge. So don't let people who um have come as like goblins to take you off track. Don't listen to them. Keep it, keep flying. Um, keep spreading your wings on the night sky quite 
quite honestly. But yeah, thank you guys so, so much. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this reading. Again, drop a little dragon in the comment section for me if this resonated with you. And again, thank you so much. Um, you, If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, you can shoot me an email. I have been so bad with that, guys, and I apologize, but I'm going to be back on it. <laughs> um, but you can shoot me an email um, if you'd like to book a personal reading with me. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, if you haven't already. And yep, peace. Until next time, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. All right, cool. Interesting. These readings are always so interesting when we do like these. So yeah, I'm excited for pile number two. All righty, let's get into it. Hello, hello, pile number two. This is AD with Cosmo Astrology, and I am doing your pick a card reading. Today, we are looking into your secret enemies, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Welcome back to the channel. If you're old, welcome, welcome. If you are new, we are happy to have you. We are happy to have you here as we grow and expand. So I really appreciate your support, guys. Um, so just a little, if you didn't get a chance, uh, please check out the intro because I describe the context and what I mean by secret enemies because it's a little bit more complex than who's working against me right now. I didn't want it to be that type of reading. Um, I wanted it to be a perspective on how to overcome these enemies and how to overcome these obstacles, even if the enemy includes maybe yourself, okay? So that's what we're looking at. So check out the intro if you haven't already, but let's get into your reading. So it's funny because this card um, in the very, in the last reading that I posted, um, about the shadow self, this was a card. So, and was it for pile number two? I can't remember. So if this, it was it was interesting to see that this card came back out um, in the shadow self. So maybe you were drawn to this card the first time. And I think that it was about control, having needing control, having needing to keep a grip. So we're gonna see how this plays out. Um, if you're completely new to this, then that's irrelevant to you. And so, yeah, let's just go into it. This It's called the, Go, the Goku Iron Con, Con claw i've really been struggling with my mouth today guys oh my gosh um go key iron claw and iron claw to me just means seizing power taking control i'm um, having a tight grasp on something so we'll see how that plays out as an enemy but let's look into your astrology let's start with your astrology cards um and go from there so your secret enemies Earth element, stability. Okay, so we have um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn represented here. I do want to stress that I don't want you to look at this and be like, I can't stand Taurus. I knew it. I knew that they were the ones that were working against me. We're looking at the energies um, that this presents. And again, the enemy, the secret enemy here, it might not be a physical enemy. Right now, from this card, I'm getting that it is materialism. It is the world. It is wanting things wanting security um that seems to be the secret enemy guys check out the placements for your sixth and twelfth house or we find scorpio in your house that is kind of in your chart um that is kind of what i'm looking at but or earth element stability enemy aries i am oh wow look at that fifth house creativity libra i balance and oh i didn't even know this you got an extra one you got air communicating and aquarius i know um, yeah, definitely. Okay. So of course we have a lot of signs represented here. Aries, Aquarius, Libra. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's uh, anyways, I'm chuckling to myself, but let, let's tune back into the reading. And then we have, um, air element, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. So we're dealing with all elements here. We have, um, except for water. <laughs> So that leads me to tell you that, you know, as far as your emotions are concerned, I think that you are pretty emotional and you're tuned into your emotions to an extent, or you have really good control over your emotions. I feel like it's a matter of expressing and communicating those emotions that can, that we can fall into issues. Now, why is that? You have a lot of talents. Um, I feel like your enemies <laughs> actually are, are, are your talent. You're so multi-talented. I think you have a lot of ideas going on at once. Once, and an enemy of yours, a secret enemy, is learning when to discipline and actually ground those ideas and move towards them in a creative, positive way. Also learning when to... Um get other people to to help you um with a lot of air with this aries energy you have a lot of drive you have a lot of passion this is my i'm an aries moon aquarius sun so i don't know if we get along no i'm just totally kidding 
I'm totally kidding. But it's just like the cool thing about that is you have a lot of space to explore your ideas you have a lot of passion you have a lot of excitement but you also have a lot of contradiction within yourself even here we got is it me 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 versus them 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 then you have me 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 versus us 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 and we 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 so i feel like enemies as they present themselves and this is um i really feel like this is um something that'll play out all in your life pile number two uh frequently is just constantly this balance between me we me them me us and having to differentiate where's the me where's the we and and again you could be looking at this from an Aquarius perspective where you constantly have secret in, in enemies who are coming and they're taking, taking, taking from you and they're they're asking all of these things of you and you're trying to be a friend to everybody and you're trying to be an ear and you're always constantly, you know, submitting to other people. Or it could come in the form of a Leo where you require a lot of attention. You are very much needy of friends and a lot of... Um, I don't want to use needy in like a negative term, but you need a lot of validation and, and constant validation within yourself. That's something that Leo, um, that's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's just a part of the sign. You know, it's the opposite of Aquarius, which is all about self-validation. So the others is other validation. But the trick is, is that Aquarians also want validation from other people too. <laughs> and Aquarius, I mean, and Leos are very comfortable kind of being on their own in a sense. So it's, it's a dichotomy. Um, but I would say that your enemies, the way that they, the secret enemies, the way that they manifest themselves, the way that people can create blockages for you is by distracting you um, and, and your relationship to other people. So your relationships can be very distracting and be a secret enemy to your progress uh, because sometimes you're either giving too much or you're actually giving too little of yourself, my pal to people. Um, so very interesting, powerful start. So let's keep moving. So yeah, we got Cancer. Oh, this is so funny. Cancer, Moon, and then Sagittarius. That's so funny. So I was like, we didn't have any emotional cards here, but then we got the two most emotional cards, the Moon and Cancer, and then Sagittarius. Um, again, I really feel... All right. So I actually have a, another interpretation of this card now. Now it's the hand. I feel like a secret enemy to you is like, there are people who are currently taking from you, my pal, two people who you should not be giving to. Um, that's really flat out. I mean, I could end the reading right there, to be honest. I feel like that's why we're doing this reading, just to tell you that um, you're supporting people emotionally, physically, spiritually, um, who are, have no intention of giving back to you. Um, and I hate to be that harsh, but that's the lesson right here. Your innate nature with this, with the Cancer Moon Sagittarius is to give, right? I, I do think that you have a very nurturing nature to yourself. I think that you, um, are emotional and I think that you kind of hide out. And so for the most part, in order to garner attention for yourself, you could exert a lot of your energy, give a lot of your resources in order to keep somebody kind of in your, uh, the sphere of awareness. Um, and I do think that this hand is like a handout. I think you're constantly handing things out and that is an active enemy against you because then either you don't have enough resources for yourself or if you've been stingy, because cancers can also be extremely stingy um, and Sagittarius self-righteous, or you end up with this abundance of things and you don't share with anybody and you don't do anything with anyone. So your secret enemies, again, they seem to act out in the forms of other people, but again, all of it is a relationship to yourself. So again, please check out that. I'm saying again a lot. Oh my gosh. Please check out the intro <laughs> because I, I go into explaining that relationship and that dynamic further. But I do think that right now your worst enemy is just your giving nature, um, your, your, your tendency to be overly abundant and overly giving or the direct opposite of that where you're not giving at all and you're very closed off and very protective. So learning how to communicate your ideas, learning how to tune into the rhythm of yourself um, is going to be kind of how you overcome this because I do think that there's a need for you to step into your emotional self so then you can start to explore different truths. The blockages that you have right now deal with your nature of overly 
of overly exerting yourself or underly exerting yourself in relationships. So let's keep going. Your secret enemies. So I got the King of Swords. So we do have a Libra, Aquarius, Gemini represented here. So a lot of air energy. So this, this could be a manifestation of somebody in your life now. <laughs> We have almost, we have a lot of energies represented here, so I don't want to pin it on just an air sign, but there is somebody in your life or there is something within yourself that you are very unsure of and uncertain of, and you don't know what you want. That is the enemy. You don't know what you want or you haven't clearly expressed what it is that you want. So you've attracted other people into your life that they don't know what they want. They haven't fully articulated what it is that they want. So there seems to be a lot up in the air. Um, and I think that this is causing confusion, but my advice to you at this point is to definitely just figure it out what it is that you want. Depending on that spectrum that you have, wherever you lean, either if you're being too giving or not giving enough, um, and the nine of cups, that is the perfect, oh my gosh, I love to see it. That's perfect. That is this emotional abundance, this emotional giving where you have enough. He could choose to share it or he could choose to keep it all for himself. That's the beauty of the nine of cups. It's up to you. Nine is a very personal reading. You don't have to give anything to anyone, but you could, again, give every one of these cups away or you can keep them all to yourself. And I think that this question you need to answer for yourself first. And then this person, I think that this is an active person in your relationship. I wonder what you'll be giving to them on an emotional front. I feel like you might be taking steps back or you'll be taking steps forward, depending on where you're coming from. Um, Really interesting dichotomy. Um, I also do want to say too, is like, I think that you have a lot of creative power. I think you have a lot of, again, emotional expressions. And so you really want to be protective of those. Um, and you also want to put pen to paper. I think that uh, you have a lot of thoughts that you actually need to share and communicate. This is a side message. Um, but your enemies will become much clearer when you start writing. I heard that very specifically. So some of you guys have kind of abandoned that poetic, creative side of you because materialism, right? Like we talked about earlier, that first enemy that you have. Um, once you're able to kind of navigate the materialism and you get tuned back into your creativity, I think that you're going to be able to separate the fish from you know, the demons, from the reefs, from the snakes, from the womans, from the mountains, from the towers, you know, um, I would really say that discernment has been a difficult, um, energy for you because I do think that you're overly generous. And I say this as my chart, this isn't my whole chart, but there are some parallels. And this was a very real conversation that I just had to have with myself like yesterday before I'm posting this reading. Um, and again, this is what inspired this reading. So it seems like, you know, as a person who it's crazy because I realized for me, and maybe this story will help you, uh, particularly when it came to my romantic relationships, I'm very nice. I'm very kind. I'm very giving. I want to be open. I'm extremely nurturing. I'm a moon on my carca. I'm a Aries moon. You know, I'm Aquarius sun. Like I love to give. I love, love, love to give. But what I had to learn was because I did not state specifically what I wanted to give to, spirit just sent me people that were that just wanted to take and because I like to give I ended up in these really crazy codependent relationships where I'm just giving 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 and I'm like why am I not receiving anything it's like because I didn't ask I wasn't specific I didn't really know what I wanted now that I've been clear for what I've wanted literally today I spoke to um somebody who is very much what I've been asking for to speak to again it doesn't even have to be on like a grand scale I'm not you know we we're, were old time, old friends. <laughs> so it's crazy. But Spirit was just showing me like, hey, what you want exists. Don't limit it out. It does exist. So like you can look for that. You're not going crazy. And I feel like you need to hear that story and, and to reopen yourself up to the truth, to the fact of the matter, because there is whoever's around you that is not making a decision. It's because you haven't fully made a decision. You haven't fully committed to what you want yet. You haven't decided if you're actually in a space to share. But in the meantime, just to keep company and fill time, you've been giving, 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 giving. Um, so that's the secret enemy. So just be mindful of like the, the people that you're giving into right now. Um, 
particularly when it comes to the masculine energy, because you possess so much femininity that a, a feminine can be a man. Do you know what I'm saying? You could end up getting a complete yin man. Um, just because there's man does not mean that he's divine masculine. So just learning how to, again, differentiate between the two, um, and stating clearly what you want to the universe, stating your intentions, putting that out there, and then letting the universe grant your wishes. But you have to decide which that wish is. Oh my gosh, I was literally listening to this song. I love it. Um, so you can't get what you want till you know what you want. <laughs> It's a real funky song. I love it. But that's the truth. Like you can't get what you want till you know what you want. And so that's kind of, I think that a part of you would say you want control, you want power, you want dominance. Um, and depending on where you are in your divine feminine or divine masculine track, I'm speaking to my divine feminines here. You're saying that, but what you actually want is to receive. You actually really want to receive. You actually want to be the moon. You want to receive the sun's light and reflect it back. Um, be honest with yourself. If you're giving and you're waiting to receive, cut those people out that you're giving to if they're not giving anything back. You know, don't don't stay stuck. And it's so funny because we have stuck in the mud. 24, 6, harmony. Like, you have so much knowledge. You have so much wisdom. But I feel like because of this confusion and not knowing what direction you want to go, you're giving yourself out or you've completely closed yourself in and you're not able to put yourself in a place to experience other things because you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You're like, this is kind of what I want. It kind of looks like what I want, but I don't want to leave it because I don't know if I walk away, then am I going to get what I want? But if I walk away from it, I know that I at least have this, so I'm just going to be comfortable with this. But I mean, it's not fully what I want, but I don't really know what I want. Is this really what I want? No, I don't think it's what I want. Do you see how you can get stuck? Do you see how you haven't moved or made a decision at all? And so you need decisiveness. So if I had to sum up your reading right now, my pile number two people, it's definitely giving me the energy of if there is somebody around you um, in your intimate who does not know what they want, they are an active enemy to you. They're, they are a secret enemy to you because they were, are reflecting back to you that side of you that does not know what you want. And because of that, you guys are keeping each other, okay? Supporting one another and continuing to be stuck. The moment that you make a decisive decision, be it what you want, be it to cut this person out, it doesn't matter. The moment that you make a decisive decision, this person will lose a grip and a hold on what they've been holding on to you. But it's up to you to take that first step. This secret enemy, your path to liberation is to make a decision. They are not. They're not going to reflect that back to you. So you got to do it yourself, okay? Um, really interesting, really, really interesting reading. We're going to move into your animal cards, but really what a strong reading. I hope that this helps somebody, um, <laughs> you know, because this was very similar to where I was literally two days ago. <laughs> and, and, and I can promise you the other side, it seems very daunting. Um, and if I would have pulled more cards, I wouldn't be surprised if the tower moment came because there's a need for your environment to be shook up so you can get your head out of the clouds. And so, yeah, your secret enemy is definitely somebody with their head in the clouds. Um, so let's look at your cards. Moose wisdom. Let your head and mind reach the stars, yet <laughs> keep your feet grounded on the earth. Listen to the ancient wisdom in your soul. The, ancient, the ancestors speak through you. You know much. So I want to pull these cards to kind of look at how could you get past, move past these secret enemies. And like I said, I feel like your secret enemies is just a reflection of, of parts of yourself that you need to heal. Um, so it's just like, let your head and mind reach to the stars. Keep your feet on the ground. You need to be grounded. You can dream. You can imagine. You can have everything that you've ever wanted. But you need to actually f and set that intention. Set that intention and start moving towards it. That is going to be what ultimately liberates you. And you will you will have no enemy. You're right. You know, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Once you choose the weapon of your sword, which is the weapon of your mouth, your mind, uh, your intuition. Oh my gosh, this got so powerful, y'all. So, whoo, man, no weapon against you shall prosper as long as you carry that sword. Um, people won't even begin to look at you, but you have to know 
what to put your energy towards, what to nurture and what to stay away from. And I do think that there's going to be total opportunities for creativity and magic and relationships that are going to happen. Just kind of as a side note with this last thing, I do see that you're moving towards a new friend group, a new support system, a new circle. The, this is the blockage. The spirit doesn't know what to send you because you're confused because I think you're dealing with somebody who's confused and they are projecting that back to you so you can address it and move on. Once you address it and move on, like clockwork, new people are going to be filled in your life who are more in alignment to what you are trying to get. And then I think that you will share these nine cups, to be honest. Um, I think you're more on the generous side. All right. So let's go to owl magic. Choose to know the truth because you can open your inner vision. You can see through deception. Let the past go and make room for a better life. Rise up. Magic and wisdom are your birthright. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm, I really, really, really love it. I love the rise up element. Magic and wisdom are your birthright. You are magical. You are so abundant. You are, you are divine feminine. I really feel like, and it's crazy because everything that happened to me really got me so rooted in my divine femininity. And I feel like that is the message. I never knew what the message was that I was to carry out. Uh, but after my experiences, I know that that's the message now. And I feel like you are a right along that path, my pal two people. And that is the truth. Whatever your truth is, for me, it was getting in touch with my divine femininity. For you, it could be something different. Welcome that truth. It'll guide you so far. But you have to see the truth. You have to see the light in all things in order for you to ask for what it is that you need. Okay. So an extremely powerful reading, pal two. Let me see. Oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Drop the eye emojis. You know those little peep eye emojis? Because you peep game. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you see. I need your eyes to be wide open or you can drop an eyeball emoji if, if you find that one easier. Um, but I, I really, that is kind of the symbol that I'm getting for your, for your reading. So if this does resonate, please drop an eyeball or an, the eye emoji because you peep game. You see everything. The moment that you allow yourself to see everything clearly and open your eyes to the truth, then you will know surely how to move forward and you will no longer be stuck. You will be free and you will be liberated. That this pal too, I'm curious about the other piles, but let me say that I feel like this reading was for you. If you picked this pile, you needed to hear this message. Um, because it's time for you to unstuck yourself. So look at what's around you. That's, that's keeping you stuck, address it and get out of there. Okay. Um, that's what I got for you, pile number two. Thank you so much for joining me. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop the little eyes in the um, comment section if this resonated. Uh, follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you haven't already. But thank you guys so, so much. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, you can find that information in the description box below. I appreciate you. Good luck on your journey. You're really close to, you know, being free from somebody else's grip. And so congratulations, pile number two. You just got to do the work. All right. Peace. Until next time. All right, and last but not least, let's move into pile number three. Hello, hello, pile three. It is AD with Cosmic Astrology, and I am going to be doing your pick a card reading. Today, we are looking at secret enemies, guys. This has been a dope reading. I appreciate it. Please, if you did not check out the intro, I think that it is really important to this reading in order to understand the context. Um, so please check out the intro if you haven't already. But if you have or you just don't care, oh, we're just going to hop into it, right? So we are starting with um, Nagel's Protection or Nagel's Protection. And it's very interesting because this is literally a, for a fortress of protection. <laughs> So it's funny to see that in enemies. So as soon as I read and I looked into this card, it really tells me that like, listen, you are so divinely protected and guided that no weapon against you shall prosper. I got to use that in pile three. Pile one, it's so funny. I love my um, I love my people and the people who are drawn to this channel so much because pile one, it was like, you know, their enemies can't even catch them because they're so fast. Pile two is just like, once you see your enemy, they can't hide. And you, you know, are very protected at this, at this point in time. So all of everybody who's come to this reading is protected from those enemies. This isn't anything that you should be afraid of. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is something that you should embrace your, your secret enemies. You should embrace the people who are out to get you because in a sense, they are manifestations 
of the battle that you're going through with yourself. And once you defeat an enemy outwardly, you defeat that same en enemy inwardly. That's kind of how I'm looking at this reading. But regardless, even if you have true foes, people really trying to cause you harm, you are so protected. Um, so that's a really powerful start. So let's go ahead and move into the tarot. I'm at to your astrology cards. Please keep in mind this is Vedic astro astrology. Placements could be different, but the energy should read about the same. We got the 11th house friends for secret enemies. Um, Capricorn, I use Rahu. <laughs> um, North node, life's purpose, Pluto transformation, and water element sensing. Okay. So we have Aquarius, Capricorn, Pluto, um, Scorpio. That's Scorpio energy and Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So pretty balanced um energies that are coming towards you so right off the rip <laughs> and and these in and these readings have been very colorful for kind of what a secret enemy is yours do definitely come from friendships and working situations if they are physical enemies um or when you're dealing with a physical enemy um I, I do feel like you sense them coming. Like, I feel like you see the snakes. You know, there's a huge snake here. Um, the North Node, is, it, North Node Rahu is the head of a bottomless dragon. And so sometimes it can just be like an enemy within yourself or within other people is kind of like this ruthless indirection of just wanting to consume, consume, consume. It doesn't matter what they're trying to consume. It could be power. It could be relationships. It could be love. But you tend to attract people. Your enemies tend to represent that insatiable part in you that is just constantly looking and reaching out and seeking more knowledge, more emotional fulfillment, more money, more relationships with people, more friends. Uh, I feel like when, when you encounter people like that, um, um, that that they're re reflecting back that part of you. I'm so sorry, guys. I've been so tongue tied this entire reading. I do not know why, but I've been very tongue tied. My tongue has been my enemy. <laughs> but um, I really do want to say and like so that seems to be kind of the literal sense of an enemy when you're attracted to people who just have like this uncanny obsession with getting something very singular. That is a sign that this person is reflecting that part of you. In yourself okay um so you might be a strongly rahu dominated person you might have a lot of cancerian energy pisces energy aquarius energies um but i'm just i'm getting that feeling that that's what can be reflected back to you on a more esoteric scale of what your secret enemies are it's this level of of, of, of obsession um on a you're protect I want to start with protection but it's just like there are people energies and there's something within yourself that is very obsessive and when you obsess over something you start meeting people who are obsessed with other things and then it starts distracting you and so that is an enemy that works with you and also just this constant pursuit for something um I don't even know if it has a name like I said Rahu is just it's just consuming just to consume I don't know what the cons what you try to consume um maybe we'll get more insight in the in the tarot but i really feel with this layout right here your secret enemies are your needs to consume and other people who are constantly trying to consume and they and they end up consuming you Whew, this is all the readings have been very interesting and complex so let's keep going and maybe this will flesh out as we keep studying so we got libra gemini neptune so funny so a lot of pisces energy um I'm hearing the word perspective and illusion. <sighs> Pal three, you you always sometimes you're always like my little tricky ones. <laughs> and I and I love you for it. And it's interesting to see Gemini Libra. Give me a second to tune in to let me let me make sure what, what the message is. Okay. So a secret enemy, I get my, my bigger struggle is how do I, um, approach this comment? Um, how do I approach like, because I feel like it works on two layers. That's really where my difficulty is because 
like I said in the intro, this is definitely your secret enemies are a reflection of you. You know, they're, they're, they represent parts of you. Um, and they sting you and they bite you in order to get to a point of liberation. Yours is very interesting because your enemies are extremely dual. You could attract um, a lot of Gemini energy or... Uh, I don't want to say two-faced, but people who... The out the outward manifestation of it is is people who are very conscious, and this goes with Pal One. Pal One had Neptune also. People who are very conscious and aware of how they are presenting themselves to you, and they always choose to bring their 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 best. Um, they always choose to hide kind of the darker elements of themselves, and they're really great magicians and illusionists. People can keep secrets. The reason why I struggle with this is because I definitely feel like you are the same way. <laughs> My pal number three people. I feel like you have access to a lot of the same energies that your enemies do have. And it is this ability to shape shift, if you will. It's this ability to kind of morph into whatever is ever needed. Again, you can use this. That's not inherently good or bad. I'm not here to pass judgment. You could be a great actress. You could be a freaking great songwriter, creative person, right? You could be a hell of a businessman, hell of a lawyer, how to negotiate because there does seem to be an element of secretiveness. You're really able to let people know what you want them to know. That is the magic. That's the gift. That being said, the karma, the Libra, the balances is other people do the same to you. Um, and so there can always be this entrapping of a fantasy. Um, and that's probably why this is a protection. You're protected, but it's a little bit of a bubble um, where you're like constantly feeding into this version of yourself and this version of yourself is constantly getting hurt by other people's version of themselves so there's always like this really watery you know undercurrent to a lot of your relationships connections again you could have pisces in a significant place um scorpio in a, in a specific place where it seems like people don't get to know you and in turn you don't get to know people um because there's always a level of fantasy illusion there. Very interesting reading. Um, I would definitely check out your 12th house. Um, you can check out your 6th house and your 12th house. But you, your 12th house is very, very important. Your 12th house is linked to a lot of how your secret enemies come. Um, and again, it could be in work. I, I do feel like it's, it's, it's a quest for power. Excuse me. Your battle is one of power. Um... And strength, even with Scorpio here. I mean, golly. Uh, whereas the other two piles were definitely more internal enemies on like a th 3D level to an extent. Yours seems to be one as if you're climbing up a ladder of some sort. You have to be very careful. It just feels like you either work in a very like difficult business to work in um because it's all about power it could be politics it could be the music business any of the entertainment businesses <laughs> um or like you know you could be a lawyer a lobbyist like you do the type of work where you have to be very there's a level of illusion that has to play into it in order for you to be effective or good at what you do. The problem is, the problem is, is this is reflected back with you with the people that you associate with. So very complex. It's just like if you are Mr. and Mrs. Smith, like you're a double agent, they're a double agent. <laughs> Y'all both agents. <laughs> And sometimes, just to bring it back to you, that can be you. You can be a double agent to yourself, you know? And I feel like it's it's constantly rotating between those two, those, those three realities. So we have the hangman, more Pisces energy, the ace of cups, and the five of swords. Wow. So... I honestly, so th very interesting reading with the hangman to be the first thing out. Secret enemy also is um, complacency to an extent if you're just stuck for the sake of being stuck. But I think that you, my pal number three people, have to really do your due diligence to take time um, to, to get a fresh perspective on things. I think that you, again, you're protected from your enemies a lot of the time. You... They really can't get to you that well because you're so cool and kind of aloof. I get like there's a very aloof 
energy to how you encounter your enemies because I feel like intuitively you already know you are very opened up in your heart space or you have a very clear intuition with the eights of cups here sometimes you can again be your own worst enemy when it comes to playing devil's advocate and arguing with yourself and people picking up petty arguments but I really feel with this storyline that you actually are okay you're pretty objective um, and you're okay knowing when to hold them and when to fold them, so to speak. I do feel like people challenge you, but I feel like you're this feminine energy right here and people are already laid out and you're just like sticking the stories in them. I, I... <sighs> Enemies, it's people's, okay, okay, okay. To take it to people that are outside of you, it's secrets. You know, secrets are your enemies. Be it secrets from other people or secrets that you're telling to yourself or secrets that you're keeping to yourself. That is really an enemy of yourself. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm just thinking like, yeah, I got Scorpio in the sixth house, which is so funny. Um, and Scorpio is secrets and sixth house is enemy. So it's just like secrets are your enemy. <laughs> And so I think that you always end up in this really interesting state with the hangman here where you're like, there could be a secret. There could be something that I'm trying to get. I'm going to wait for it to be revealed. Aha, that's what's been revealed. Now action can take place. Now I can change my mind. You know, the five of swords, it doesn't have to be a physical argument. Fives represent change. Um, and swords represent thoughts. So then you end up having a change of thoughts. Once you have a change of heart, your thoughts change. I feel like you follow your intuition. You know, you definitely follow your internal navigation and then you wait to receive the evidence from the universe and then you act accordingly to that evidence that you received. Um, so you're definitely a person that like what's done in the dark shall come to light. I feel like you you see a lot of things, you you feel a lot of things that are happening. You probably experienced a lot of betrayal and all of it has been I I swear when you're on a quest for power and when people are keeping secrets from you and you're keeping secrets from other people. <laughs> but it would be one of those things where like, let's say that you had a friend, just to kind of use an example of what I'm talking about. Like, let's say that you had a friend and this this literally happened to me. Um, and you guys were both going out for the presidency of drama club or what have you. Um, you would probably win because I think that you're qualified and then that friend would turn into an enemy so I think that you end up with a lot of frenemies oh that's so okay thank you frenemies is is also the key word for you pal three um and so again what were they trying to get status you both want to be president you won then they turned into an enemy then they started keeping secrets withholding secrets telling secrets using secrets against you <laughs> you know and all the other stuff but again the original fight was a fight for power so i'm glad that we started off there um put that into context and then again even when people are lying to you or withholding information from you it's because they still want to keep a certain power over you over you if somebody's not telling you something it's because they don't want you to be able to make a decision um so i imagine that you encounter a lot of that where people are not telling you things because they don't want you to be able to make the best decision that you can but what they're failing to recognize is you're very in tune with yourself you know before they ever present anything you again you're so protected you're so in tune you you are able to see a past um a lot of illusions because in my opinion you're a master of illusion so it's like how are you gonna play the player in this kind of energy so Whew, really interesting. I feel like even with the Libra 11th house here, you end up meeting your match when it comes to different people, you know, and different ways of how, you know, you guys are interacting and all that good stuff. Okay, let's move to your oracles. So we got Golden Palace 23, five again. When I first, and this flipped out before I actually started the entire reading, so it's interesting to see it come out, but I really got this energy of like power status. <laughs> With the golden palace, it's just like, again, you you kind of are like a queen. You're protected. You you don't necessarily encounter your enemies directly, but just know that when you are a powerful person, you have a lot of two-faced enemies. You have a lot of people who are vying for your attention, who are vying for your attention because they want power. They want a power over you or they want power from you. Um, and so 
again, you're protected. I think that you experience wealth. I think that you experience leadership, but you have to be very careful about your network. You have to be very careful of snakes. And I think that, you know, the snakes are going to be careful of you too. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I just get this real frenemies energy, especially starting off with 11th house friends. Um, you encounter people who are very similar to you and they bring out and they highlight these different energies. You know, you guys might be, check out your 11th house. Um, check out what placement you have in your 11th house because you might notice that enemy, that quote unquote enemy reflected back to you. Whew. I really hope that I made sense during this reading, guys, because this was really powerful, kind of like Pow 2. Um where, yeah, it, it's a frenemies vibe because you get, you receive that back from the universe. Absolutely. Um, you receive people that reflect you for sure um, as you start to move forward. So, yeah, this is a very interesting reading. Kind of feels like this was honestly like the next step after Pile 2. Um, but I would really say keep your friends close and keep your enemies closer. That seems to be your motto. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So even with this golden palace, it kind of gives me the nine of pentacles where you can end up in like a gilded cage of some sort. Um, just because so many people are coming at you from so, so many different ways. But again, meditation is your friend. That's not your enemy. Silence, peace, stopping for a second, seeing the situation for it is, is, is a friend for you. So at times in your life, you're definitely going to have to like escape and, and, and hide because, um, there's always going to be people who are, are going to try to take your position, who are coming from your, you know, this sounds like Drake, like mob ties. Uh, but I, I really take this as a compliment, A, because you're protected and B, you have something that people want. You have success. So I wouldn't worry. Whatever you do in your journey, don't worry. But you have to be very careful with the people that you associate with because, you know, yeah, human nature. If you outdo a friend or you supersede a friend, they instantly become an enemy instantly if you accomplish something more than a friend that you had to they just instantly turn into a uh enemy or if you've elevated in some way their secrets will come out and this is protection <laughs> they don't deserve your blessings right if they're not a true friend they can't support you when you win right so that'll be a good test to decide who's for you is if you notice that you had something you know great happening do they celebrate you or are they jealous of you you know um, yeah. So let's look. And then you got dolphin play, swim in the happy joy of living, inhale confidence and exhale fear, dive into your wisdom, go with the flow and look at all this flow energy. So, you know, it's interesting. We have all these Pisces. We got the dolphins, which are, you know, big fish. Essentially, we have the ace of cups and I love this play. I, I I, I'm happy that this that we're ending on this note because I don't want you to fall into where you feel like you have to protect yourself all the time um, or where everybody's just out to get you. At times in your life, it has felt like that and it'll probably feel like that again. But this is all for you to enjoy. You're protected. You're not supposed to fear uh, people. You really are meant to go with the flow. Blessings happen for you because you are the illusion and you see past the illusion. I feel like you are an embodiment of water elements of some sort. You must have like a stellium in water or you have really strong water placements particularly pisces with neptune and the hangman um where you're a really good balance of yin and yang and again even that 12th house energy that liberation that we were speaking about that escape oops sorry penelope oops sorry my dog <laughs> um but you're able to just be and you're able to just swim and enjoy life and you're able to change your direction and you're able to you know switch quickly and you're able to have a good time and that just inherently pisses people off that are closest to you because if they have any limits any limitations on themselves they feel like you know they got left out of some sort and so it ends up you know they end up acting as an enemy um but that's not your problem, literally, pal. <laughs> All of this reading was to tell you, I mean, we started off with being like, you're protected from this. So you don't have to necessarily have to worry about it. You don't have to be fearful of it. It just is a part of your life's mission. It, it's just going to happen. People are going to come into your life and then you're going to be sent off. It could be karmic. We had Libra come out. It could be that you owe these people's karma. These people owe karma to you. So you just notice that like, it's like an exchange. You're in, out, in, out, in, out. The moment that you just go with the rhythm, follow, you know, some senses, you wait to, to let things play 
play out. Other times you just know that it's not going to work out because you've encountered that before. So your discernment is on point, but go with the flow. Like I said, dive into your wisdom. You, you, you've seen it all before. So I think that you have the luxury of seeing it all before at this space in your life. So pile three, I'm kind of like an interesting note to end with. Um, it really feels like spirit is giving you or you need to give yourself permission um, to have fun and to go back out there again. Because at this point, the wisdom that you've gained from the, you know, following your Rahu and following this quest for, for power or just excellence and whatever it is that you're pursuing all of the stumbles and pitfalls that you've hit have been a part of you gaining this wisdom and this knowledge to the point where you can be in the hangman position where you don't have to be super active in certain things to know what's going on you your intuition is very keen it, this could be the high priestess right the feminine energy would could be the high priestess here so it gives me that type of energy but just go with the flow you know don't you know don't let things restrict you and yeah frenemies so you know for your <laughs> For your emoji, if you have those two twin girls that are like hand in hand, <laughs> that really is like your representation for your reading. So if this resonates, then please hit those two little dancing bunny girls. Uh, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. You know, wink, wink. Um, and yeah, that's really what I got for you, my pile number three people. So really magnificent reading. Um, I hope that this was a source of inspiration. And again, not a source of fear. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you inspire a lot of, you know, competition. <laughs> for sure. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that shiz. You got to give it how you live it. But thank you so much, Pile 3. Uh, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you haven't already. And if you'd like to book a personal reading with me, then you can shoot me an email. I appreciate you guys so much. Peace. Until next time.